Hey guys, hope you're doing well and thanks for watching today's video. Today we're going to talk about the keys to understanding logic. So in the last video we kind of introduced you guys to what logic is, how it's used, and then we went through a non-mathematical example and just described, well this is how they got the converse, the inverse, the contrapositive, etc. But now we want to talk about the keys to understanding logic and just how to use it. So the keys that I listed here, um, the first one is, is that if the original statement is true, the contrapositive will be true. So the contrapositive and the, the original statement have the same truth value. So if one is false, both are false. If one is true, both are true. So contrapositive, truth value uh, equals original statements. But we cannot say the same about the converse. So contrapositive, truth value equals original statements. If the converse is true, the inverse will be true. So the middle two, um, I'll just put that here, same truth values for these middle two. But the first one, the statement and the converse do not have to be the same. That's what I said in this third key. Just because the original statement is true does not mean the converse and the inverse will be true. And in our first example in that last video, that was actually the case where the converse and inverse were false but the original and the contrapositive are true. And that is a situation you can see a lot. You have to be able to I really think critically about, well, is the inverse true? Is the converse true? And the good thing is you only have to do it once. So you really have to do it twice. First, you need to figure out, is the statement true? And if the original statement is true, you know the contrapositive is true. And second thing you need to do is you need to analyze, is the converse true? And then if the converse is true, you know the inverse is true. So it's really just two steps instead of four. So it makes it a little bit easier. Now let's take a look at how this is actually done if we're given um, a real situation, a mathematical situation. So our statement here is if a shape has four sides, it is a quadrilateral. So to be able to answer these, this is what you need to, you need to be able to understand the mathematics and the geometry rules that we've kind of talked about throughout the course. And now we need to be able to apply them and think critically, well, is this always true? Is it sometimes true or never true? So if a shape has four sides, it is a quadrilateral. That's true. That's the definition of a quadrilateral is a shape with four sides. True. Well, then if I'm thinking about my rules that I just said, the keys, if I know that's true, I know the contrapositive is true. They have the same truth value. So that's, those steps are easy. Now, look at the converse. If a shape is a quadrilateral, then it has four sides. So this is basically saying, do all quadrilaterals have four sides? The first one is different because it was saying, "Do all four are all four-sided shapes quadrilaterals?" They're, I know they sound the same, but they are indeed different. In this case, both of them are true, however, because by definition, a quadrilateral is a four-sided shape. So, if a shape is a quadrilateral, well, it must have four sides, and then that means the inverse must be true as well. We wouldn't even have to check it, but let's just check it because we want to be um, thorough. So it says, if a shape does not have four sides, it is not a quadrilateral. And that is true. A non-four-sided figure has a different name. It can't be a quadrilateral. It must be something else. And lastly, let's just check the contrapositive. We already know it should be true, but if a shape is not a quadrilateral, then that shape does not have four sides. And that is also true. So that's how you use these rules. See how I only had to look at the first two statements, and I was able to determine the truth values of all of them. So now let's look at one more example. So now, going off the same kind of thoughts process, now we have, if a shape is a square, then it's a quadrilateral. Well, if you know your rules for um, shapes, you know that a square, well, it has four sides, all four sides are equal, they, they all have right angles. Um, well, so it is a quadrilateral, because I said if a, if a shape is a square, that implies that it's a four-sided figure, which is a quadrilateral. So that's true. Well, that implies that the contrapositive is true, okay. Then this second one, the converse. If a shape is a quadrilateral, then it is a square. So what this is asking is, are all quadrilaterals squares? And the answer to that question, I want you to think about it critically for a minute. Pause the video if you need to. Are all quadrilateral squares? The answer is no. You could have a rectangle. You could have um, a uh, rhombus. You could have a parallelogram. Those are all quadrilaterals, but they are not squares. So this one is false. The, the converse is false, and that makes the inverse false as well because they have the same truth value. But again, I want you to see and really see why this is. Let's look at the next example of the inverse. If a shape is not a square, then it is not a quadrilateral. 
So if I have a shape that isn't a square, uh, let's think parallelogram, it's not a quadrilateral. Well, a parallelogram is a quadrilateral, so that is not true as well. So it follows the same logic that you can have a four-sided shape that is not a that is not a square, but still is a quadrilateral. So that's why that one is false. Lastly, contrapositive. If a shape is not a quadrilateral, then that shape is not a square. Well, it we're saying uh, if it's not a quadrilateral, we know it doesn't have four sides. Then we'd know that no sh no shape that does not have four sides can be a square. All squares have four sides, so that one is true as well. And so those are the three keys, and that really helps us solve these logic problems a lot quicker. So I recommend you memorize these so you can study them and then just be able to do these problems a lot quicker. I know it can be confusing at first. A lot of this might be new vocabulary and things like that, but I promise that if you keep practicing, you'll be good to go. So in the next video, we're actually going to go through and create the contrapositive, the converse, and the inverse, and then analyze their truth values. But this time I just wanted to give you some practice. How can I determine if something is true or false based on the statement? What is it really meaning? And then what are some keys to do it quicker? So hopefully this was able to help. Let me know if you have any questions. Thanks for watching.